Going back to the beginning, we've, we've called this group, or the group has called itself, the Strategic Delivery Partners Group, SDP, and that has no political connotations whatsoever, but the clue is in the title, really. The aim is to be strategic. It's not about trying to all get together in a room and take five pence off a, the cost of filling a pothole across the Alliance area. Um, it's about delivery. And as Martin has indicated, it's taken three years to get the politicians to agree on the political aims, ambitions, and, and to create that impetus. This is very much about recognizing delivery is further down the line, but delivery has to be planned and it has to be thought about now, rather than the private sector awaiting and awaiting and awaiting. And a few years down the line, the Alliance comes along and says, oh, by the way, we've done all this fantastic stuff. Uh, would you like to build some of it? So this is about getting in early, getting some input in early. Um, and, the, and probably the most important word is partnership. Um, and there's a lot in what Martin said and a lot in what we've heard over the last day and a half, those of you who've been here, about the value of collaboration and the need for collaboration. So that's really what's brought that group together. Um, already been touched on. This is not something the private sector, the group of people I represent, have got together in a room and said, have you heard about this alliance thing? We need to get in on this. Come on, let's, let's go and find a way. Knock the door down. Let's get ourselves on it. Right from the very beginning, the alliance, the partners who put the alliance together wanted and felt they needed the input from their private sector delivery partners. Um, they opened the door and the private sector said, yes, we recognize this, we recognize the benefits. There were some huge numbers. It's not an entirely altruistic uh, offer. There were some huge numbers in there. Why wouldn't those partners be interested in uh, understanding what's happening and, and how could we contribute to it? About opportunities, but very, very important words. These are people operating within existing contractual frameworks. There is a provider for Northamptonshire. There is a provider for Oxfordshire, there is a provider for Luton, and so on and so forth. So they are operating within those existing, normally one-to-one -one arrangements, but in the same way that the Alliance clients and their partners are collaborating, then we are seeking what are those opportunities, what are the possibilities for that group of providers to also collaborate with each other, but critically with the Alliance. Um, and, and how can we actually capture and, and measure some of the benefits of some of the outcomes, not least the ones that, uh, that James has alluded to? Um, and perhaps further down the line, we hear a lot of talk about streamlining models, improved models for delivery. We have a very well-established model for one-to-one -one local authority, national authority, relationship with the private sector, procurement, delivery, and so on and so forth. Um, should there be, is there need to explore a different model for this broader alliance arrangement? Um, and I think that's one of the things we certainly hope will be uh, and expect to see on the agenda. I said I would say who is involved. Uh, it's not a team that's been picked, it's a team that picks itself. Those are the people who are currently providing highway services, design, management, maintenance for the providers that, oh, sorry, the, uh, the clients that uh, have been outlined you know, within the main presentation. So I won't run through them, they're, they're fairly self-evident there, but that's, that's who's currently involved. It's not a closed shop, uh, certainly isn't a closed shop. If there are other tier one strategic providers currently operating within that alliance area, then they are more than welcome to come along and join us, and, and we certainly hope that they will. It's probably worth saying as well, we also, through those same organisations, have direct uh, contact with and can take input from the Highways England providers, because of course we've got this meshing of strategic, potentially major, and certainly local authority networks. Told you there's a picture. Uh, I'm just re going through reservoir dogs again at the moment. I haven't seen it for years, and I thought, wow, what a reservoir dogs picture that is. Um, there is no implication to be read into the fact that it's taken in front of that rather shiny railway station just up the road here. Um, there is no 
hint, I don't think, from EEH of a, of a takeover or a merger with Midlands Connect. It's just purely where we happen to have our first meeting. Um, all should be, I guess, fairly self-explanatory. Before I was involved, and I've been involved four or five months now, the providers met with the clients and it took a room about this size to get everybody in. And it took a diary management situation that took years of planning to get everybody there to have their say. Um, the first outcome of one of those meetings was to say, look, we can't go on like this. Can't we get somebody to, to be the middle person, the, 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 the run around, the bag carrier, whatever you want to call it? We came up with a slightly more uh, romantic phrase than that, single point of contact, although I think it's referred to in the programme as liaison. I'll settle for liaison. Uh, either way, my role is to, is to represent the delivery partners, to move up and down that axis between the group of delivery partners and the alliance, represented by Martin's team, and, and sit within that team on a periodic basis, not day to day, but working for and to clarify, paid for by the delivery partners. Um, and it's really to try and support, drive, encourage, uh, identify where are those areas within the existing constraints that we're working under, because we, we, we must recognize those, that we can actually act collaboratively and, and given all the commercial constraints around, work in a collaborative way to deliver benefits to the Alliance in years to come, whilst at the same time, as I say, not entirely altruistically, uh, what are the benefits for that group of providers individually and collectively at the same time. And I also, uh, Martin's been kind enough to ask me to accompany him to meetings with DFT Highways England, with the other subnational transport bodies, to start that exchange of ideas or to perpetuate that exchange of ideas and to start to get some input from that group of people from that private sector organisation into those sort of uh, discussion areas and I attend the uh, strategic transport forum on behalf of the delivery partners as well. As I said, work streams is probably putting it a bit strong. That sounds as if people are actually doing anything. We haven't quite got as far as doing anything yet, but uh, we've not been going three years, so that maybe excuses us. Um, there are four areas, really, that we think we can do something. As I say, each delivery area, whether it's design, management, maintenance, within a single local authority area, are working extremely hard and very effectively to deliver efficient highway services and there is no will nor frankly much prospect of saying well let's look at this whole thing about you know can we shave a penny off winter maintenance next season it's happening within those individual contract areas and i don't think we really collectively will make a huge difference to that or benefit the areas that we want to look at and the, um, the following james is, is very helpful in that in that understanding and using data. Let's not have the clients doing all of this good work on data gathering, data integration, and then simply hand it over as part of a contract package. Surely, shouldn't the people who are also gathering, using, processing data be involved in this and have some understanding of, of where that data is coming from and an input into what it can be used for? Um, so the whole use of the understanding what data is out there, how it's used, how it can be used in the future is, is one area we feel that we have something to add. Um, if I'm a focal point for that small group of delivery partners, one thing we feel is that that group can also be a, fo a focal point for the wider transport sector. So that everything isn't coming in through the alliance. Some of that technical input, that innovation, that new idea, that implementation, the trials, if you like, can come in through the, and should come in, through the collaborative work of the delivery partners, which is the second area. We are, for obvious perhaps and less obvious reasons, very interested in what I would term a, an ECI type approach to the major route network. We don't want to sit back and listen with interest to the discussions about a major route network and it then be presented with some form of management maintenance model and the providers say actually 
if you'd talked to us three years ago, we could have improved that or we could have helped you improve that. Well, isn't this the time to start that conversation, be involved from the beginning, have that input now? And in the even longer term, um, Martin referenced a period there of, of 30 years. If the Alliance is thinking about its long-term infrastructure needs, the planning, then shouldn't the delivery also be thought of? How will that infrastructure programme, that massive development in the east of England, and sorry, that was a Freudian slip, wasn't it? England's economic heartland, how will that be delivered? And how can it deli be delivered in a slicker way at improved cost, improved returns and better outcomes?